just putting some samples together to give away at the boat show. I figure about a third of a cup is a really strong, nice sized coffee. You ready? This has been a lot of lead up. We're going to the boat show in Annapolis, our first time. I'm speaking at the all women session with Bean this afternoon. Weather's turning. Hopefully we won't regret this. A little wind coming up later on this afternoon. Could be a, a bouncy trip back. We'll see. Are you nervous? Actually, I'm just really excited to get to know more cool people. Hello. Oh hello. my god. Oh, oh, so good to nice see you. you. Is that our boat? Yeah, yeah. I think 2029, 20, <laughs> Yeah. Five year plan? Yeah, we could sell her and get a deposit down. We should be ready to go. Cool. I'm going to have to get a job at McDonald's, of course, <laughs> to make ends meet. I like that wrap. How much is this one? This one is fully kitted out and we'll sell it to you today for $2,795. Hull two and three are sold and four, I believe, just went out the door as well. So the, the, the length of getting one is going expeditiously into 2023. Really great to hear that the economy is doing so well. And though we'll never be in the market for something as fancy as this, it's interesting to see the design trends. And if I had to summarize with a couple words, with these really fancy high-end boats, what I'm seeing is a lot of automation and luxury. Furling booms, powered furlers, powered winches, and a focus on entertaining areas. This Kinetic 54 actually has three helm positions and the forward cockpit. The forward cockpit was first seen on gunboats and Chris White designs and there were a lot of naysayers at the time. And now that feature has been adopted by several designers and builders. <laughs> This is the owner. Oh, hello. Yeah, hi. Hi. In terms of new design direction, probably the most radical departure from what they had been doing was this Voyage 590. This Voyage had pretty decent bridge deck clearance and there's that forward cockpit. Innovation isn't always a good thing. This is an excess boat. I'm not even sure of the length. And to get a look at it, it seemed like there were maybe 10 designers fighting for different features and they rolled it all into one. Kind of a mess. This guy here, Tony, he just said something that Nick says all the time, which is, I'm the luckiest man you'll ever meet. So I think we need a competition. It's Tony Cook, South African gent, which puts you, put you up pretty hard up there already, but you I'm say the, the top already. You're close so to the top. top. You're close to the top. Says it's the luckiest guy in the world. My foot is already sore from kicking his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I see a competition happening down I in the Caribbean. You. We're gonna, I will have several different metrics. Who gets the luckiest with the sales? Who gets luckiest with the weather? Who's luckiest with the check-in procedures? Is that we'll all? have a competition. Yeah, is that all? Claudia is my wife. She will conquer. Oh, uh, oh! Now yeah. it sounds like Claudia and I need to have a <laughs> <laughs> duel. Tony, it's really nice to meet you. Yeah, you yeah. see it down in the islands, of course. And uh, yeah, drop yeah. us a note through the Love thing. Love Nice to meet see you. you. <laughs> Take care. Bye bye. Competition's on. Eh? Okay, right. you got it. You guys can't go two steps without meeting people oh, that love it. They either think they know you or are friends. <laughs> no, you Rina do. and Jeff were patrons, we're oh, big fans, yay. we got the coffee. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Wonderful to meet you. It was also kind of cool to get on some boats that have been out for a little while, but we'd never set foot on. We were particularly struck by the Fontaine Pajot's 42-footer, 
as well as the Leopard 42. Everywhere we went, people were asking our opinion about particular boats. No significant failures of no, primary no, systems or they, structural issues? No, and I think that the 46, they, you know, Melvin and Morelli, great designers, it's solid. Yeah. I can't speak to the newer ones. I, I almost feel like... I mean, we always do our best to stay in our own lane and only offer opinions on things we really have experience with. The boats overall were so much less interesting than meeting some of you. Right? But it's still, the vibe comes through, right? You guys, you guys are so freaking cool. I love the energy you guys put out. They were, you guys were in China, right? That was, yeah. Stop it! Yeah. You're right. <laughs> that was oh, you guys. Oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Hi, I'm here at my, uh, my sail ride booth. <laughs> it's pretty this looks vaguely familiar right here. And this is the guy who's in all the videos. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hi, Hi. Hi. I'm Megan. Nice Hi, to Megan. meet you. How are you. I love all your videos. So, oh, good. Yeah. Thank you. Are you the owner? No. Okay. But I, uh, my, <laughs> been my father uh, uh, started the business. I out so that I can prevent this from getting kinked. Okay. And, and that means I have to concentrate on this area. And Ted told some friends to start watching y'all. So. Oh, oh, thank you. Appreciate nice. it. Thanks. Look at this darling little fur. It's got a screecher. It's got a jib. I want it. Yeah? I don't think since the Hobie Trimaran that we tested out a couple of years ago, I've seen something that looks so darn just plain fun. I mean, I don't know if it's practical at all. It's a blow-up catamaran. It's an inflatable catamaran. I think this would fit where the generator went, <laughs> right? How small will it hold up? Think of the fun we'd have. We could have fun. We could do it together. Yeah, totally. The carbon version is about 15, depending on your options, and the aluminum version is about 11.5. Yeah. How much does it weigh? Uh, whole boat is just under 200 pounds. I think 187. With the aluminum configuration, the carbon's is slightly lighter. We're certainly not boat show veterans, but one thing I was a little disappointed in were the boat show deals. I had heard you could get discounts, but pretty much everybody was asking full retail. And it's not like these were new or innovative products. This is stuff that's been around for a few years now. One thing I was happily surprised by were the smaller manufacturers going direct to the consumer. Just here at the Natos USA, uh, I didn't actually know about this brand beforehand, but we're talking about the size and the strength of the gear that's out here. They calculate the strength of the loads for a catamaran to be between 1.5 and 1.7 of a monohull. So that just gives you some idea of how much the shock loading matters to what you're gonna pick out for the blocks out here. Well, how's the motion? Oh, well. It was, uh, it was cool, you know, it was fun to connect with people. The actual boats and the boat gear, you know, I guess it's okay, it's kind of cool. How about you? I thought it was so cool that people just come up and like, hey, I love, I love your show, I watch your show, and just, you know, so engaging with us, and like, we know each other, and it's really fun to meet people. And so thanks everybody for stopping and saying hi. And then my talk was really fun, really casual. Lots of people asked questions and it was really cool. Glad I did it. Good job getting us home before dark. That was a little rough. Yeah, a little bouncy. My arm is like jello. <laughs> Holding us in the stiller. Good job, little motor. Good job, little motor. You did a good thing for us. How's my hair? It's swept. Wow, 
That was like being in a dream. That was totally amazing <laughs> and energizing. People were like, how are you guys keeping the energy going? I was like, no, you guys are yes. giving us the energy. <laughs> and I love seeing everybody meet each other and make friendships and find all these commonalities. What an interesting group. I think that evening, uh, six couples had purchased boats or put deposits on boats. Four Leopards, a Sea Wind 1600, and a Balance 482. Congratulations. All from our group. So congratulations to you guys. Yeah. We've got a community of doers and it's like everybody just gels yeah. so well. It's Adventures, amazing. Adventurers and they are craving community and supporting each other. It's just really the kind of world we all want to live in. So of course it was absolutely wonderful to get so much positive feedback from you guys and I just can't tell you how how much that means to us. Yes, it really pushes us forward every week to keep doing these videos, so thank you. Yeah, a lot of you acknowledge the fact these videos really do take a lot of effort. We love hearing that our videos are useful. Yes, you can't pay us a higher compliment yeah. than saying that we're bringing some sort of value to the table. So we're just so appreciative and privileged to be a part of the conversation. A lot of you had said that you really appreciate some of the more, I guess, mundane things that we do with this boating lifestyle it provides an insight into the real lifestyle. So in that spirit, I thought we'd just kind of give you a, a slightly less, I don't know, slick? Yeah, this is just uh, kind of a vlog day in the life over the past week, uh, getting Clarity ready for her big next adventure. So enjoy and thanks again to all of you who make these videos possible which is down to every single one of you who decides to click. We really appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much. All right, one last thing I almost forgot. We did actually discover one product that absolutely blew us away. And that's coming up in next week's episode. If you're trying to run your boat with extreme efficiency, electrical efficiency, you don't want to miss this episode. All right, we're anchored out here in Whitehall Creek and we're gonna go over to our friends, Terry and Peggy. There's some patrons who've been collecting our mail for us. And later we're gonna go stay at their dock for the boat show. But we're gonna go meet them and get some packages. So that'll be fun. Instead of bringing garbage this time, we're bringing coffee. I think we need to take up all these people who wanna come help Clarity. They're like, what can we do? We want to work on your boat. I think we have a big party. We right. do waxing, get in the water, bring your wetsuits. <laughs> we need help. <laughs> Thank you so much for getting our mail. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Hi. It's a beautiful place you got. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice. Spot. And a boat. Your boat looks beautiful. Now we, too. we normally come bearing <laughs> garbage. Hope it's coffee. But for yes. you guys, I was going to offer <laughs> it. <laughs> I hope you like uh, decaf. And decaf. Do you? Yes. Are you there decaf? You yes. I'm Megan. Hi, nice Megan. To meet nice you. to meet you. <laughs> Finally. Stop. I know. Finally. It's, it's been a couple of years. We keep going Yay. back and forth. Now that garage. No, we. I, I've always thought it would be. Uh, it'd be very difficult to do the boating. First of all, thanks, mom. <laughs> mom, you take care of us. You are our everything, mail-wise and everything actually. Uh, somebody manages to swipe our credit card number. It seems like once a year, and we got our what our boat papers in here. Yep. Mm. Registration. Smart. It does feel like Christmas. It does. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're getting. Here. Here. Well, I mean, this must be. Ha! Let's see. Check it out. Bum puzzle. Try it on. That's nice looking. Just wash the fan when you reach out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. Now that's a hat. For those of you who don't know, Bum Fuzzle. It's my good buddy Pat Schulte, Pat and Allie. We wrote a book together called Live on the Margin a long time ago now. Is it 10 years ago already? I think it's 12. Anyway, these guys are the OG bloggers and travel in the world, traveling around the world, all sorts of modes of transportation for like, I don't know, 15, 20 years. <laughs> We're all getting old. 
Thanks, Bone Puzzle, for that. So I, then I ordered him an extra large. Let's feel that. Okay. <laughs> and Nick made this logo. Yeah, yeah that fits. It does look good. Yeah, that yeah. Nice. Okay, turn around. Ah, oh, nice. That look good? Nice. Oh, yeah. It's yes. soft. It's soft Very on nice. the inside. All right, we'll yeah. do it. We'll do it when we come back. Okay. Soon. Thanks. Yeah. And Bye. awesome to meet you guys, finally. I know. Finally. So finally. Yeah. <laughs> Going into a uh, patron's dock here on Chesapeake. Uh, kind of a restricted movement sort of area. So this will be interesting. We'll take our time, go slow. If things don't look right, we'll come out and rethink it. We're just gonna nose our way in. We're actually gonna butt our way in, <laughs> as you'll see. from the sun and also for privacy. So they've been in good use for three years. And at a minimum, I'm gonna save this bolt rope. All right, there's a secret tree of knowledge that has to do with getting rid of mildew and spots on boats. And this is just one more try, one more experiment in the long quest to find a mildew remover that actually works. So let it be known that all you have to do is post one silly picture of your product on the internet and we will try it. We're that desperate. I'm hopeful. We're gonna go take this to the, the pool house. Oh yes, the pool house where we can treat this stuff on the concrete and then, per the owner's instructions, soak it in the pool. Okay. So wet thoroughly. I'm glad these instructions are here. And then we're supposed to use a cloth, but as usual, we're rebels. We're not gonna do it exactly as the instructions say. No cloth. No cloth. But I'm gonna be reusing that. You're not making a new one of these. Look how clean it is. Nick. Cool. We'll come back with some brushes and rags. All right, doing a little shopping trip, getting stuff taken care of. Thanks so much to Terry and Peggy Slattery for setting us up. Brightness. Brightness. 
So what languages do you speak? Uh, like Azerbaijan. Azerbaijani. Yep. And... What do we have here? Alright, so now I've had my birthday, I'm officially middle-aged. And once you're middle-aged, you pretty much have to have a pressure washer. It's happened. I resisted. I went. I didn't buy. I turned around and I went back and I purchased. Problem is that the decks on Clarity have gotten a little porous. It's pretty natural with any gel coat, any fiberglass boat. But these little pores, they collect dirt and you can scrub them. You can scrub them real hard. But really the fastest, the best way to get that grime out is a pressure washer. <laughs> what you got here is a fine piece of industrial grade equipment. It's back in 1600 PSI right at the nozzle. It's all electric. Firm hand grip. This is ready to do some damage. Well, hopefully not do some damage. This is ready to get some stuff clean. share some transformation happening on Clarity. Our rub rail, which these are notorious for getting black. They're so ugly. Nick has uh, figured out the solution. Acetone. Um, so yeah, this works. Acetone works at cleaning these, uh, these rubber rub rails. However, we actually don't recommend this. This is not, this is not good for the rub rail. But the reason why we're using it is a, it's pretty much the only thing that works at this point in the life cycle of the rubber rail. And also, solvents have been used on it previously. So it's one of these deals where once you start using this kind of stuff, you are going to be going back to it time and again. Step by step is to use the acetone on it, and then right behind it, you wash it off with warm soapy water to stop that chemical reaction. It used to be the teak cap rail that we had to see tall all the time. <laughs> Now it's the rub rail. Now I'm doing some major surgery, replacing our stereo. We're getting out of the Stone Age. We're actually going to be able to connect to our computers now. What are you doing, my love? <sighs> Polishing, waxing. Let me show you what I did, because this part looks really good. I'm just finishing this. Yep. Looks pretty good. Yeah, nice. Hello. <laughs> it's hard to tell, but Clarity got a wax and polish today, and she's looking amazing. Very, very cool. And Nick is doing the rub rail, so it's like we got a new boat. All right, dealing with something that we actually so far haven't had to deal with much on Clarity, but she's now 12 years old 
and we're starting to get little issues like this cropping up. Just a little bit of water we noticed coming in right through here. You saw like a little droplet after we're doing the power washing. And finding leaks on catamarans like this is really, really difficult. I should say finding the source of leaks because there's all this interior engineering and joinery and the water can travel a long, long way from where it's actually getting in the boat. This was actually not that difficult to track down. And uh, just doing some tapping work, figured out that this is actually the base for a pad eye where we run a turning block for our code zero or our spinnaker. And so there's a ton of force being import, imparted right here at this, uh, especially at the back of this pad eye. So really not a big deal. It's not a fun job, um, but it's something that you want to catch early if you can, because the water will just do slow damage over time. And then you'll end up with uh, interior furniture damage, woodwork damage, and even you could... You could possibly, over a long, long time, find some delamination issues because of a leak like this. But um, another thing that, that people are sometimes worried about with cord boats like this, and Clarity is indeed a balsa cord boat, is worried about deck fittings like this getting into the core. And what you'll notice is there's a difference in the light here. This, you can see the light coming through. Whereas this, you can't see the, the light coming through. This is all the core, the, the um, balsa cord deck. This is where you actually walk. This out here is outboard of that, and there is no core. So typically, the edges of the laminate skins are not cored. So that's the case here. And I'll be taking a look at all these little fittings to make sure that they're all nice and tight. All right, you're gonna see me do a little extra prep work here that maybe doesn't seem appropriate for a non-cord section of the deck. But trust me, this is gonna make a lot of sense. Anytime you are re-bedding a piece of hardware on the deck, you've got to clean out all the old adhesive and sealant. It's really hard to do that without enlarging the hole. But here's the problem. Now the hardware doesn't fit so well. Now the hardware is rattling around just a bit. So you say, okay, well, I'm just gonna put more sealant in there. Now, the problem is that a high load piece of gear like this is gonna be a lot, of, uh, a lot of stress on this joint. And the adhesive and sealant will compress you'll get movement and you will get another leak. So it's better to start over, maybe enlarge the hole a little bit further, clean out everything, and then put some epoxy in, then re-drill the hole so it's nice and tight. Not straightforward. This is not straightforward in the least bit. Is anything on a boat straight? No. <laughs> so, if, if you're trying to get something to stick on a boat, some one thing to stick to another, you can't get it to stick. And when you're trying to get something to not stick to something else on a boat, it has to stick. And it's just, it's a rule that the boat gods made a long, long time ago. And it, it holds true. You just, if you want it to stick, it cannot stick. And if you're trying to get it apart, you just, it's stuck. Uh, so something needs to change here. We need we need the sticky stuff. They just need to start making tape out of pure corrosion. If you could just, it'd be called corrosion tape, and that could work. But I, I can't get this to stick. Yeah. So I filled the holes with epoxy, and we're re-drilling.
I think the proper term is countersink, but I'm not totally sure. The idea is we're just going to enlarge the hole a little bit at the top so that some of that sealant, some of that caulking can rest in between the fitting and the bolt and provide a little extra seal. Okie dokie. Nick just finished the video for this week and we are here still in Whitehall Creek. And one of the great things about being here is that we can get mail. So I'm gonna go up and get our sale right delivery so that I can do our side shades. indestructible thread. I've never paid $130 for a school of thread. That's a lot but of But this is has a it's lifetime thread. PTFE. It's clear thread. I'll use this for the stack pack and that will make the stack pass la stack pack last forever. We just got a package for from somebody a viewer in Massachusetts. Uh, I don't know what it is. There it says apples on the box. That would be exciting. I was just thinking, I want some apples. Oh, I think it's gonna be apples. It's not apples. Oh, it's coffee. <laughs> and maple syrup. And apples. And some chipotle pepper jelly. Thank you so much, Eric. That is so sweet. Dude, this is above and beyond. <laughs> Wow, Look my God. Oh. Oh, man. You make us want to do another podcast. <laughs> yeah, dude, totally. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Really lifts us up. Yeah, sorry we didn't make it up to Massachusetts this year, but thanks for bringing Massachusetts yeah. to us. Yeah, <laughs> down to us. Dude, you got the for one. my dance parties. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and then what's this? 